This is Denmark's oldest train in regular service, based on a design going all the way back to 1965, making it well over 50 years old. These tiny rail buses still serves as a vital link to towns along a small rural rail line in western Denmark. Join me for a trip back in time on these historic trains as we take a trip across the marshland, explore the train's long history and take a look at what the replacement looks like that's coming very soon. Hello and welcome back to another video. Today we are in the tiny fishing village of Tuberon with less than 2000 inhabitants, which also happens to be the terminus of the railway we'll be travelling on. And you can see the station probably resembles what you'd expect from a town with 2000 inhabitants. But you do get the waiting shelter and there's a car park next to the station. In terms of station facilities, well, we get a station sign, as well as some information posters, but that's about it. The line out here is among the least frequent ones in Denmark, only seeing 5 departures a day on a Saturday like I was travelling on. You can also see a zone map for fare calculation, but this has become a bit redundant, with a phone app and the Reisecard smart card being the main forms of payment these days. The railway spur to the left used to go all the way down to the town's harbour, which was used for freight service all the way up to the turn of the millennium. But still in use and awaiting departure on the main track is our train. This is one of Midjuske Jernbaner's three remaining UTO, capable of speeds of up to 80 km per hour. Our unit carries the name Hilden and was built by Siemens Duwerk in Germany in 1983, meaning it's celebrating its 40th birthday this year. Right, let's head on board. Unlike every other train in Denmark, payment is done on board. You can use the Reisecord smart card by tapping it on the readers located next to the door. And today, the 10th of December, where this video goes live, is the last time you have the option to use the cash-only ticket machine. After today's date, if not using a Reisecord, all tickets must be purchased in the Metrafik app. There's no reserved seating on board these trains, so you can just go and sit anywhere. And man, what a retro vibe. I think somewhere like here will do just fine. And now for one of these trains most iconic feature, the very special door closing sound. We depart to Beron a few minutes behind schedule at 15.35. We quickly reach our maximum speed of 80 km per hour, rushing through the low-lying marshland, which seems like a great opportunity for me to share the route map for today's journey. We are travelling on board the railway line known as VLTL, on board the 15.30 departure on a Saturday. Our train have scheduled stops at Tyberøn, Tyberøn Kirke, Sporøvej, Grønland, Harboøre, Rest, Victoria Street Station, Strande, Dejrup, Klinkby, Balleby and Dem V, where the train reverses direction. We then continue to Armose, Bonnet, Ramme, Forre, Sinkebæk, Bækmansbro, Amstrup and finally Vemp after a scheduled journey time of 1 hour and 11 minutes. The distance covered is 57 km, giving the train an average speed of 45 km per hour. Shortly after leaving Tuberon, we will pass the chemical plant at FMC Rønland. It's the only place along this line that still sees regular freight service. The freight train normally doesn't run on Saturdays, but we're able to spot the shunter used inside the plant to arrange the freight train. And just a few seconds later here at the level crossing, we join with the freight spur into the chemical plant. Right, it's time for a tour of the train. In the rear part there's a small flexible area where bikes and proms can be stored. You will also find stop buttons throughout the train. 
This must be used if you wish to alight at one of the intermediate stations, as they are pretty much all request stops. The seats are laid out in an expected 2 plus 2 layout. The railway line also has its own travel magazine. Next station is Sprogevej. And the trains have been fitted with automatic announcements for the stations. The second part of the train is not much different. Same layout, mostly airline style seats. And you'll find a flexible area towards the front as well. This is also where the ticketing facilities are located. This is also where you can find a route map as well as various information posters. As well as information about when you can ride this railway line for free. Because Midjuski Anbana also have some newer DeZero trains that doesn't have ticketing facilities on board. So when they are used along this railway line, you get to travel for free. And speaking of new trains, this Uto here does not have much time left. Midjuski Anbana currently has 7 new battery trains on order from Siemens set to be delivered next year in 2024, to replace the entire fleet of free Uto and 40 trains. These are going to be the first battery trains in Denmark, so it's going to be exciting to see how they are going to perform. These Uto have a long history on smaller railway lines in Denmark, with the first one being delivered to Lollandsbane back in 1965, almost 60 years ago now. And since then, many more were built for similar lines in Denmark all the way up to 1984. These trains often carried the nickname Grisen, which roughly translates into something like the pig, but I prefer their other common nickname, Lunette, which is a play on words for the Danish word for express train, Lunto. At the heart of this railway line is Lemvi station. This is where we meet with the rest of the line from Vemp. And it's also where we find the operator's railway maintenance facility and depot. Both the newer DeZero trains as well as these Uto are maintained here, and we can see a few packed up. I think in the weekend generally only one of the Utos are used for all the departures. And just a few seconds later we approach the station here in Lemvi, where the train will have to reverse direction. The station building is now home to the headquarters for the railway operator operating the trains on this line, as well as maintaining the infrastructure. The train is scheduled to sit here for 10 minutes, so let's go and have a look outside. Parked a little away from the station, we see a now decommissioned Uto. Over the years, a few variants were built, with this one being the smallest one, at just one carriage with a cap at each end. However, only the two car versions remain in service to this day. But in the past, on some of the busier lines, variations with intermediate cars existed, creating up to 5 car long trains. And with our brief layover here in Lemvi almost being over, it's time for us to board the train again. And with a quick turnaround, we have now made up the entire delay, and we're heading out the same way we came in. And here we see the line we came in on up from Tuberon, leaving us, and it's now time to head on to foreign track for the remainder of the journey. I think it's about time for a very brief seat tour. There's no recline, no power outlet, no anything of that, but the seats themselves are very plush and comfortable, so I guess this is good enough for a regional train that's 40 years old. And you can have a read through the magazine provided for free on board. I will say there is a lot of advertisement in it, but you will find some interesting stories. Many of the stations along the route are very basic, such as the one here in Sinkbeck, which is literally just gravel with a shelter on top.
And just like that, we are now approaching the railway station at Vemp, where our train terminates. And it's time to talk about fares. This trip costs a flat fare of 52 kroner using the Midtrafik app, but if you use a Reisekort, depending on the time and day, various discounts are offered. I used my Reisekort and paid 32 kroner, which seems alright for a one hour journey on a regional train. I hope you've enjoyed this trip back in time on this little local railway in Denmark. These trains will always be a bit special to me, as they are some of the first trains I can remember from my childhood, having seen them regularly on Lollandsbanen, which I grew up near. If you have enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe to the channel. I try to upload a new video like this every Sunday. You can also follow me over on Twitter at InterCitySimon. I usually post live from my travels over there, so it's a great place to get a sneak peek at what videos might be coming to the channel in the future. Thanks for watching!